Hello and welcome to the agenda. I am Ajay Kaul. Today we will discuss the BLA attack on army camp in Balochistan and whether it was revenge for the killing of prominent woman Baloch leader Karima Baloch. Days after prominent woman Baloch leader Karima Baloch was found dead in mysterious circumstances in Canada, Baloch Liberation Army or BLA, an armed group attacked and destroyed a Pakistani army post in Bolan in Balochistan. At least seven Pakistani army men were killed in the attack. BLA indicated that it was revenge for the killing of Karima Baloch. So are the Baloch people going to intensify their struggle for freedom? from Pakistan in the aftermath of Karima Baloch's killing. We will discuss this and the related matters in the agenda today. We are joined by prominent Baloch leader Hakim Baloch, who is the president of Balochistan National Movement UK Zone. We also have with us Jitendra Kumar Ohja, who is an expert on geopolitical matters. But before we begin our conversation, let's have a look at this small report. We cannot allow the enemy forces to run rampage against innocent civilians, women and children. If innocent Baloch civilians, women and children are not safe and continue to be targeted in Balochistan or abroad, then the combatant citizens of the enemy state will also not find refuge. This is what the Baloch Liberation Army in a statement after carrying out a major attack on Pakistani army post in Balochistan on Saturday in which it said 11 soldiers were killed. This is what the Baloch Liberation Army said in a statement after carrying out a major attack on a Pakistani army post in Balochistan on Saturday in which it said 11 soldiers were killed. The Pakistan army said 7 soldiers were killed in the attack. The tone of the statement clearly indicated that the Baloch Liberation Army was linking its attack to the suspected killing of prominent woman Baloch leader Karima Baloch some day back and suggested that it was revenge killing. Karima was found dead in mysterious circumstances in Canada on December 22, with clear indication that she was assassinated by Pakistani intelligence agencies. Karima, who was former chairperson of Balochistan Students' Organization, Azad, had taken refuge in Canada in 2016 as she feared threat to life in Balochistan. She was the second Baloch activist to die in mysterious circumstances in a foreign country in the last nine months. Earlier, senior Baloch journalist Sajid was found dead in similar conditions in Sweden in March. Karima's death has triggered a major outrage among the Balochistan people. The Baloch Liberation Army considers the defense and liberation of Baloch nation as its utmost responsibility and that it is fully capable of starting a similar war in Pakistan's Punjab province that Islamabad is trying to impose on Balochistan and other countries. People of Balochistan are fighting for freedom from Pakistan which occupied it in 1948. The Pakistani state is using all kinds of repressive measures to suppress the freedom struggle. It now seems that the struggle is going to intensify in the wake of incidents involving Karima. Bureau Report. Now let's welcome our guests, Mr. Hakim Baloch and Mr. Jitendra Kumar Oja. Welcome to the program, both of you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So let me begin by asking Mr. Hakim Baloch. So we have seen the attack by BLA on the army post and major casualties have happened there. And after that, there was a uh, BLA took responsibility for that and also gave a hint that it was a kind of revenge for uh, Karima Baloch because it said that our people are not even safe in foreign countries now. How do you see that? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for invi inviting me in this debate. Uh, one thing uh, I want to clear that uh, the Baloch militants, the way they work, of course, they are, uh, I think, the biggest part of the struggle because the Baloch uh, uh, freedom struggle and the way they take it toward the ideology of the freedom where they are directly in front of the enemy and they are sacrificing their life. 
And the statement which I also read after the attack in Bolan, it simply says that it was a revenge, uh, not particularly uh, uh, like the uh, revenge of this, uh, what happened in Canada, but they indicate the Baloch refugees are not safe in Western countries now, and as everyone knows, Pakistan is behind it. This looked like it was a revenge, but I think the revenge for any of Baloch martyr will be the freedom of Balochistan. No, why I said it is a revenge because I read out the statement, what the, I mean the crucial part about that. It said the Pakistani forces are targeting Baloch people not only in Balochistan, but also in foreign countries and refugees in foreign countries. So that is, I think, a clear hint that it was revenge. They wanted to, isn't it? Yes, yes. What I'm saying is the biggest uh, revenge that will be the freedom of Balochistan. Of course, uh, uh, an armed group, the way they re release their statements, the way they work, uh, of course, it was a revenge from their side. But on the bigger picture, the freedom of Balochistan will be the revenge of all the martyrs. That is what I'm saying. Of course, it was uh, an attack by them and they claim the responsibility and they shoot their statement and it was very clear that why they went uh, that uh, I think that was uh, I think one of the lethal attack in recent times so yes they made it very clear if Pakistan wants to take the war to Baloch women so, so we also have the abilities to take it to the uh, families of these uh, I think army and whoever support the Punjab so, uh, after the uh, killing of Karima, we'll say killing of Karima Baloch in Canada, there have been series series of protests all over the world by Baloch people and uh, I mean demanding justice. So, do you think it is going to change the game? I mean, there is going to be a boost in the agitation or protest by Baloch people for this struggle? Well, uh, there has been protests, I think, uh, all over the world, wherever it was possible because of this uh, COVID situation. And in Balochistan, people are protesting since the news came out. And even today, uh, I received news in uh, two of the areas in Tung, which was the uh, area from where Banu Karima belonged, and another area, Awaran. The army officials uh, stopped people, they threatened the protesters. They even tried to abduct some people from Tom, but uh, they were saved because of their family, women, and everyone uh, jumped into the between of them and they took their male part of the family and saved them from the army. So, uh, happening in Balochistan today. And of course, uh, the Baloch protests won't stop. There will be uh, continuous protests across the globe, and we want the world to listen to us. Okay, we have also, uh, I mean, Mr. Oja is joining us from Delhi. He is an expert on geopolitical matters. So, I will ask him, uh, Mr. Oja, you heard what we discussed. And so, do you think that it was a kind of revenge by the BLA? Well, I am in no position to say anything because uh, my no, knowledge your, your is... Assess, your assessment because, yeah. Your assessment because yes, the statement is issued, on the basis of statement issued. Yes, uh, yes, it looks like because uh, killing of uh, Karima Baloch was highly provocative. And uh, Pakistanis, you know, we have already discussed on your platform how they have built a, man, a massive uh, crime network globally. And this arrogance of Pakistani military establishment, they think they can oppress anyone and everyone. And, you know, they have been trying to hoodwink people in different parts of Pakistan itself, different parts of uh, that territory in the name of Islam, and then again, uh, hatred towards Hindus. Balochistan has always been a very rich province, and, you know, its history goes uh, really much, much, uh, its history is much, much older, uh, cultural heritage is much more. You know, even if people have embraced Islam, they remain fiercely proud of their identity. And, you know, this uh, Sunni Punjabi Wahhabi clique of Pakistani military, they think, you know, without any history assets, they think they can insult all these people, which is incorrect. And they think that, you know, they can abuse them of Islam to oppress people over there. And they think that hatred towards Hindus would unify these people. Look, perfect, all right, Islam, you always respect in India. We consider Islam is one of our principal religions also. And uh, it teaches uh, integrity, it teaches honesty. And Pakistani military establishment, you know, they have been using all shades of crime to, you know, to perpetuate themselves. So, you know, uh, BLA is not left with any other option. You know, if you push them to the corner, you don't talk to them, you consistently under their resources, pulverize their people, abuse uh, you know, 
their uh, this Duke fight in such a gross manner, and even West has been silent to it. So what do you expect? Natural resources they they have they would use it they would counter attack. So you know it looks like a kind of counter attack. I don't know to what extent it will make an impact, but certainly they have uh, registered their presence. Unfortunately or fortunately, no one is adding or abetting the military. Within Pakistan, India always had a very pacifist approach. We don't want to interfere in uh, internal issues of any country, and we have never found any reason to do that. So that's how you know Pakistani military establishment has had an easy time so far. But I'm sure you know if they continue to indulge in something like this. Internally, people will revolt, and I hope that same people and human rights lobbies within Pakistan they stand up and they speak up against what happened to Karima Baloch and whatever their military establishment is doing to people in that territory itself. So, but Mr. Oja, if we uh, note that uh, the world has kind uh, almost been silent on the Karima Baloch incident, they are treating it just as it was na natural death. What do you say on that? Look at West. I have told you earlier also. You know, they have, their police and criminal justice uh, system. I think in many cases they have become very soft, and uh, they are not in a position to investigate anything which is little out of ordinary. Because this appears very suspicious. How come a political leader of uh, this standing? How can she kill herself? There is no reason like this. She wasn't depressed. There is no history at that. And you know, the moment they find these things are very demanding, they have their own priorities. You know, this is also a lesson to people. Who are uh, some of our uh, elite in this part of the world? They think they can safely go to West and they can be comfortable. Sorry, we need to protect the situation of uh, rule of law in our part of the world because moment you know this kind of clandestine uh, criminal groups they indulge in something, they indulge in something as heinous. Uh, the enforcement agencies in those countries are not going to pay as much attention. So I am not very convinced, you know, uh, that Karima Baluch's uh, death was. Uh, a normal death, or uh, it was not a suspicious death, and uh, because Pakistani military establishment has both the motive as well as capacity to indulge in something like this, and I'm saying it on the basis of my own experience as a consular officer in one of the most developed countries. Moment anything came to Pakistan, uh, the police uh, agencies were very reluctant. I don't know what was the reason, whether there was a local pressure or they they uh, didn't want to undertake something very difficult. And even when you know, in certain occasions, Pakistan uh, was pointed it out that this particular crime has its uh, links in Pakistan. They used to say, "Well, our investigation jurisdiction is limited to this country only, and we are not in a position to go to Pakistan or indulge in something like this. Our rule and uh, system is such that you know we only, we can only go to this point." So I am convinced okay. that Karima Baluch's killing is not normal. There is every reason for us to suspect it was uh, uh, it was a malicious killing. Perpetrated by Pakistani state, and uh, maybe Baluchis have uh, been left with no other option but to take a revenge in this manner, which is unfortunate. We consider any loss of human life is unfortunate, but Pakistani state has to wake up. Right. Pakistani state has to respect rights of people in that territory, and Baluchis are raising a very fair issue. They have never been part of this. Uh, they don't want to face domination by Sunni, Wahhabi, Punjabi clique. They want uh, they, to have their own aspirations. They don't want their resources to be looted by this uh, clique from Punjab for their own purposes rather than looking after right. their people. Yeah. So if they are risking against colonization, Pakistan has to speak up. Iran, Pakistan has to address that. They are reluctant to do that and nobody is supporting them in fact. Nobody in the entire world is literally supporting them or talking about them. Because Pakistan, Pakistan you all said and done on recently. Until 9-11 was considered a very crucial strategic alliance. And even after you know 9-11, you see that uh, at Ahmedabad, Osama bin Laden was uh, detected, and still, you know, West has been very, very ambivalent in its dealing with uh, Pakistan. Right, Mr. Hakim Baloch, as you heard uh, Mr. Oja saying that the West is uh, not too much concerned, and there are loopholes. Maybe that is why what Pakistan has been able to exploit and targeting uh, Baloch uh, refugees and activists in other foreign countries. I mean, in foreign countries. What do you say on that? Yes, of course, we believe that uh, there's something which is, I think, uh, ignorant of the uh, civilized world uh, towards the Baloch cause because uh, for the last one decade, the Baloch uh, diaspora has been uh, trying to raise their voice, but instead of listening to us, uh, we now have seen that Baloch uh, political leaders, Baloch journalists are being targeted in Western countries as well. 
So yes, the uh, investigation is required in both cases which recently took place in Sweden, the case of Sajid Hussain Baloch and now the case of uh, Banu Karima Baloch because these cases are not a uh, normal uh, natural death or cases of suicide. But there was some foul play which cannot be ignored. So we are still uh, waiting uh, for Canadian authorities to come up with uh, some better uh, investigation and reports to that case. And one must not ignore that now Baloch are not only facing the Pakistani occupation, but China is also involved in that region. China uh, has a history of worst human rights violation within China. Uh, so people know if you cannot uh, uh, criticize the Chinese government or the Chinese army actually, which rules the country and Pakistan is now following the path which China has shown to them. So yes, we believe, uh, the Baloch National Movement believe, the Baloch Nation believe that there was some foul play happened in Banu Parima's case, in Sajid Hussain's case. The authorities, we request to them, we urge them that they should look both of these cases uh, and investigate them uh, with more than just a uh, normal natural death or suicide cases. Mr. Baloch, uh, today I read a statement issued by UNGA president. He has condemned the attack on Pakistan army post by the BLA. But at the same time, I, I don't think UN has ever spoken on the enforced disappearances and atrocities that are being committed in Balochistan by the armed forces. What do you say? So in this uh, situation, how hopeful are you that uh, Canada may be inquiring or investigating the cases? Uh, see, when it comes to the, I think, uh, attacks or something like that, there are, uh, they have to, some, I think, obligations where they have to uh, make sure that the country who is part of their system, like Pakistan, is part of the United Nations, unfortunately, a signatory of many of the human rights, uh, uh, you know, uh, promises where they are supposed to uh, follow them rules, but they are not. And the United Nations or the Secretary General of United Nations and many other international human rights organizations are ignoring those, uh, I think, war crimes and they are ignoring the fact that why Baloch are resisting, why they have taken up the arms, why they are in the mountains, why they, they are, attack, are taking place. So, there is something they need to consider and yes, of course, I think this is a really challenging situation for the Baloch nation to make sure that Canadian authorities should and must uh, take this case uh, further and they should investigate because the way it looks like they, there won't be a thorough investigation what I uh, have seen so far. Okay, we also heard uh, Pakistani leaders including Prime Minister Imran Khan saying that Baloch Liberation Army and other groups are being supported by India. So are you being supported mm -hmm. by India? Well, uh, for the Baloch Liberation Army, I think they can respond to that. Are they being supported by India or not? But uh, as uh, far as BNM is concerned, I think the support which we are getting with, as they blame is this support. I am talking to an Indian media because Pakistani, is me Pakistani media will never show what happened to people of Balochistan and they will never listen to our point of view. And yes, we have all the right to go to the world and tell them what is happening in Balochistan. And if... No, I'm, no when, when, when Imran Khan yes. and other leaders talk about Indian support, they, that means Indian state is supporting you. Is the Indian state supporting yeah, you? This is where I was coming. This yeah. is where I was coming. If Indian state or any other state in the world supports Baloch cause, Baloch freedom struggle, Baloch movement. We are more than happy to take the, the support without any uh, shame, without any, you know, uh, answer to Pakistani state because they are responsible what we do. They are killing us, they are killing our people. There is a genocide which is taking place for last seven decades. We have all the right to take all the international support which we can. And we must. So you are saying in about future, are you are you getting any support from India right now, as of now? Because Imran Khan and other leaders have been ranting about this. 
that India is supporting Baluch people, this well, freedom struggle? I think they are confused. Uh, they are confused with many things because when a prime minister of India talks about Baluchistan, when he mentioned Baluchistan in his speech, they have uh, have this feeling that India is supporting Baluch uh, struggle. Let me be very clear: if India was supporting Baluch struggle the way India should, the situation would be very different. There would be another Bangladesh by now, and there would be different parts of Pakistan. So yes, we are not receiving what Pakistan is blaming on Baluch people. Okay, Mr. Oja, you heard uh, Mr. Baluch uh, saying that they are not getting support from India. So, what kind of support could India give? Look, uh, Pakistanis have a very narrow vision because they themselves are involved in all kinds of criminal activities. So, naturally, they would like to impute something of that nature. But yes, India is a major democratic country. It is the biggest democracy in the world. So, we have a moral obligation to people in this region. Uh, I certainly, we don't believe in violence and we, we cannot be party. happy neighbors all around us, but Pakistani elite is not committed to its own population. Given a chance, they would plunder and pulverize Pakistan itself and they will run away to the country. West also has to acknowledge this thing that they cannot have a problem pressing in Pakistan in this way because they have all they have been doing is to take recourse to crime, organized crime, drugs to illicit uh, uh, currencies, to counterfeiting and all sorts of crime. And West has been somehow, as I said, very ambivalent. And that is the biggest problem they have created, not only for uh, minorities within Pakistan, but all over the world. Because Pakistan is uh, a known epicenter for terror. Whatever may be their strategic interest, this strategic interest that the West is costing mankind very heavily. And, uh, and normal people, normal citizens in Pakistan. So I feel that India, as the biggest democracy in the world, has a moral obligation to see that you know human rights are respected universally. So I think to that extent we have to bring uh, President Pakistan to every possible means and see that there is a credible rule of law because Pakistan has managed to, you know, subvert even sections of, uh, I would say, Indian society. You know, so, so this is something which directly impacts our national security. I think we need to be proactive. I, well, uh, I don't think that Indian government has ever supported uh, any one militarily, I don't think, I, even though there may be suspicion and... Uh, that would not be an ideal approach, but bringing Pakistani leadership under all-round pressure is in the best interest of peace and tranquility in this region. Otherwise, Pakistani elite is going to sell all resources of Baluchistan and all other regions within Pakistan to Chinese and others, and they would profit here, they would run away somewhere else, because they are collaborators, they have no loyalty, no commitment to this region or to their own ancestral heritage or roots or anything. They, they are ruthless people, and I don't know what your vision is except self profiteering But uh, Mr. Oja, maybe India could have raised voice over the kill, I mean, the killing of uh, Karima Baloch at least, isn't it? Certainly. Yeah, certainly, India has to do its thing to raise voice over all human rights uh, violations in Pakistan. I would also say, you know, that uh, you know, we should not think, you know, certain sections in India where its knowledge about Islam is very poor. Because uh, it's not that, you know, like Iranians, they have always been one of our close friends, Baluchis. They have always been one to one, you know, the friendship whenever we meet, wherever that friendship is there, that goodwill is so strong. Here, here in Pakistan, they say that we relate far more with India than anyone else. Daudi right. Bora, I know the spiritual head of Daudi Bora, I had a privilege to arouse on to meet him on a few occasions. And, you know, we, we felt that he's one of our own spiritual leaders, which he is. It's my lead. So, all these different sects of Islam, you know, they have flourished in the subcontinent and they are. The more uh, they identify with Indian values, Indian ethos, and our composite values. Okay, okay we, so are, we need to bring okay. and take all these people together yeah. and raise a voice wherever there is violation of human rights, anywhere in this part of the world. Right. Uh, we are running out of time. One last question to Mr. Hakim Baloch. I read the BLA statement that they have said that we will take this war to Punjab now. Do you think they have the capacity to do it? And brief comment, maybe last. 
Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure about the number militants uh, have in their camp and how they operate. But I think uh, this is first time when a Baloch uh, group has said this in in a real senior serious manner. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. Uh, I hope that that this should not be the case. The Pakistan should learn that they have made a big mistake and they should let the Baloch people decide their future and they should be free before anything of that sort happen. Right. So Pakistan has to decide. I should give Baloch the right to decide their uh, future. What? One yeah. second, I'll say one thing. Again. Yeah, please, brief. I think uh, we have to see and review the whole structure of Pakistani political establishment and stranglehold of military. The whole world has to come together to ensure that stranglehold of military is removed. It's an artificial creation and they have no business to plunder and lose resources of other minorities in that area. Right. So they have Pakistan is looting resources of all provinces and they have no right to do it. But thank you both of you for participating in this debate today. This is all in the agenda today. Thanks for watching. I will be back with another important topic tomorrow. Till then, goodbye.